I built my current workbench around four years ago when I first moved into this house. I built it in a weekend from pine dimensional lumber, and it's served me pretty well for what it is. But in those four years, I've really figured out what I want in a bench, and that old pine bench just has to go. Today I'll be starting on a split top Rubo with a bunch of cool features that I really can't wait to start using. I break down what I can at the miter saw and at the bandsaw, but I had to move my bandsaw so that I would even have enough in feet space to be able to rip these long boards. The next up is milling. What's only going to take a few minutes here in this video took me a weekend to do. There's an important key step here though. I'm milling up the blanks for my legs at the same time as the outer two pieces of the bench top for each side. This will make my leg joinery significantly easier later. Once the milling is done, I make sure to mark the outer two boards of the top. One will end up on the outside and the other one will become the dog strip. It's important to note that the outer lamination of the leg and the outer piece of the top are milled to the same thickness. The dog strip and the middle lamination for the legs are also the same thickness. With the milling out of the way, I'll be focusing on the legs. I start by ripping everything to width and then cutting the rough length. My legs will be a lamination of three pieces with the middle lamination left longer than the outer two. I'll cut everything to length with my crosscut sled. So I just made a pretty big and very dumb mistake. I looked at my plans and it says, and this is a change SketchUp made at some point where it's, when you have it set in inches now, it'll say two feet, in this case, five and three quarters inches. And somewhere in my head, I translated that to 25 and three quarters inches. I can recover. I had this piece and one more just like it over there set aside for the vice jaws and the dead man and some miscellaneous stuff. And um, luckily, these are still long enough that with some glue up, I can glue these back together and I can make those components. But man, that was frustrating. So <laughs> day two working on this and I am just going to turn the lights off and walk away and come back tomorrow night. The next day I came back to the shop with my pride a little bruised, but let's face it, mistakes and recovering from them, they're just part of the craft. And spoiler, I made another mistake or two on this build. This time around though, I paid a little extra attention to my plans and moved on to gluing up the legs. I think I went through a half gallon of glue on this build. If you're planning a build like this, make sure you have plenty on hand. I let the glue cure overnight and the next day I took them over to the joiner to clean up one of the sides and then ran them through the planer to clean up the other side. Squaring up the bottom and the shoulders looks a little complicated here but it's really just a three step process. First I set a stop on my crosscut sled, make a pass on the bottom, flip the legs over and make a second pass. This squares up the bottom. Next I need to square up the shoulders. I set my blade height so that it just kisses the bottom of what will be the leg tenon. With my bottom square, I can reference off that to make a pass on each face of the leg. This squares up the shoulder. Finally, I can set my stop to reference the shoulder and cut the legs to length. 
I can't use the tenon for this since they've been left long for later. All right, so before I can do anything else, the first thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that I identify these legs. There's a difference in, of course, the, the main ones, the, the left front and the right front, because this one is gonna get cut for the, for the leg vise and, and all of the hardware that goes along with it. There are some extra dog holes that go on the right front. And then, of course, just generally to locate all the mortises in the correct places. So how they are right now looks fine to me. I'm just gonna take a Sharpie and mark it right on the tenons on these because that'll never be seen. Okay, so my first step, I've got everything up here. The next thing I need to do is to get all of my rails cut to length. Now I have a slight deviation from my plans and my legs because of my mistake. Cutting the length led to using some pieces that were slightly narrower than what I had originally planned. So instead of these legs being five and a half inches wide, they are five inches wide. So I've got an extra inch of length I want to account for. Ultimately, it really doesn't matter. If I were to make the base just an inch shorter, it really wouldn't make any difference at all the way I'm doing it because when it comes to the joinery to the top, that's all gonna be relative. I'm gonna put the base together and then assemble everything based on the dimensions of the base anyway. But I know what the difference is. I'm gonna go ahead and account for it. The legs get all the mortises marked out before I do anything else. There will be a rail on the top and bottom of the sides and just on the bottom of the front and back. I'm going to be cutting all of my mortises with a router using a half inch upcut spiral bit and an edge guide. This will actually take two passes to get my mortise width to the three quarters of an inch that my plans call for. I also take multiple passes to get to my final mortise depth. For the top mortise, I have to add a scrap piece to the end to provide support for the edge guide. Otherwise, the process is the same. All the mortises also get squared off with a chisel before moving on to cutting my tenons. I start by scoring each tenon with a marking gauge. And this is more about getting a tear out free cut than it is about marking the length of the tenon. I'm cutting the tenons with a dado stack at the table saw and I get my blade height honed in on a scrap piece that I milled up with the rails. I'll take a pass, check the fit, raise the blade a hair, and then take another pass until the fit is just right. Then, when I'm happy with the fit, I'll cut all of their tenons at their full size. The longer rails can be a little awkward to handle, but with a long sacrificial fence on my miter gauge, it really wasn't an issue. The last step is to raise the blade and cut the tops and bottoms of the tenons to size. The fit I go for at the table saw is always a little tight. I prefer to finesse my fit with hand tools at the bench. I test the fit, take a few passes with the block plane, and test again. I'm normally pretty careful about taking the same amount off each side of the tenon, but the goal here is to have the rail flush with the face of the leg, and I noticed it was a little bit off, and taking material from just one side of the tenon corrected that. Once a tenon fits the way I want, I mark its location and direction so I don't get anything mixed up later.
All right, with the all the, the major work done with the mortising and all the joinery complete on these, I've got a lot of other things to lay out on these legs. So depending on what the leg is, I've got a few things. This is my right front leg, and I'm going to get four dog holes on this face and four dog holes on this face for a combination of work holding and storing stuff, so I'm going to lay them out. Also, I know that I'm going to be installing um, some of these casters, uh, retractable casters on all of my legs. And there is a pattern that they come with. So I'm, I will go ahead and mark out, actually it'll go on the side here, but I'll go ahead and mark out where I'm gonna be drilling for the bolts that are gonna hold them on. And then I can get some of this other work out of the way, some of this uh, kind of setup stuff. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Everything's based on a center line, so I will start there. All of the dog holes on all four sides of the leg receive a small chamfer with the palm router. Next, I move on to mounting for the casters. I decided to drill and tap and use bolts for all of my mechanical connections on this bench. I'm sure lag screws would be just as effective, but in my opinion, tapping is a superior method when it can be done. The final step for the legs is to drill for the draw bores. I mark them out on the outside of the mortises and then take the legs over to the drill press to drill them out. With everything dry assembled, I can use the same brad point bit to mark the location on the tenons. When I drill the tenons, I'll actually drill a sixteenth of an inch closer to the shoulder than where the mark is. I'll take the rails back to the bench to clean up the holes, and then add a chamfer to all the edges of the tenon just to make assembly easier. The top rails get two holes drilled in each. These are bolt holes for assembling the top later on. The holes are stepped, allowing the bolts to be set halfway through the rail, and the holes are also slightly oversized to allow for wood movement on the top. The bottom rails also receive a date of three quarters of an inch from the top. This will be for mounting the shelf after the base is assembled. Assembly went pretty well. 
The beauty of using drawboard, mortise, and tenon joinery is that you don't need any clamps. The offset of the holes in the tenons will pull everything nice and tight and hold it in place while the glue cures. Chamfering the dowels with a pencil sharpener makes them easy to install and also makes the offset of the holes a non-issue. As I assemble the base, you can see that I have the left leg mortised out for the leg vise hardware. I decided that rather than the videos being in 100% chronological order, I'll show that entire process in the next video, leaving just the building of the base in this one. So watch out for part two, where I'll rewind a little bit and start with the leg vise. For now, I'm going to wrap this one up and say thank you for watching, and I hope you come back for part two.